Hello, I'm Joe Follinsby. I'm the author of a series of sci-fi novels that speculate on how we will live on an Earth changed by a warming climate. The series is called Tales from a Warming Planet. Book four in the series is titled Restoration. In a near future world threatened by climate disaster, a sassy independent city girl finds herself in a small conservative town that's resisting a plan to take down an irrigation dam. I'd like to read the first 1,000 words of my novel to you. I hope you enjoy this excerpt. Restoration by J.G. Follinsby Chapter 1 People work in this upside-down pie tin? Junie Y. rolled her eyes. She prepped herself for an about-face and a run back to the public car that had dropped her off at the entrance to the derelict, saucer-shaped visitor center. She wanted nothing to do with the place, but the soles of her shoes, despite her raging desire to mount an escape back to San Francisco before it was too late, stuck to the stained sidewalk. She couldn't disappoint her father. Turning up her classic Greek nose at the brutalist architecture, Junie imagined him directing workers to pry out the letters that once hung on the wall by the glass doors. Reversed shadows of unbleached concrete made the old name easy to read, a Royal Grande Reclamation Project. Removing the name was part of taking down the bone-white decommissioned dam looming behind the center. It's one step toward fixing the planet, her dad said. Why does Dad need me here? It's hot enough to bake something in the pie tin. I'll end up a cinder. She knew why. Support. A shoulder to cry on, though he'd never put it that way. Control over a teenager. That was more like it. FaceTime matters, he said. She growled. Bullshit. After two and a half days in the car, Junie was crabby from a rough night's sleep as the car's AI drove the 1,380 kilometers northeast to utility. She would have arrived sooner, but she had to stop a couple of times to avoid feeling imprisoned in the two-seater. The countryside east of the Cascade Mountains was nothing but a sea of dust and sagebrush. A few orchards of apple and pear trees were an improbable green in this wasteland. She missed the home smell of ocean and cypress. She'd rather be a million other places, but her father was right about one thing. The cinnamon-red basalt columns that rose in cliffs either side of the arroyo, like old-style barcodes, were breathtaking. Sweating in the 43-degree heat, she cussed at forgetting her sun hat, and she fought an urge to retrieve it from the car because she might climb back in and tell the AI to screw this place and take her back to her friends. She and Ed fought about it for days, but she promised him she'd come to utility. Damn it. She had to, because she was 17 and still his responsibility, and he couldn't raise a child from 1,380 kilometers away. Child? Who made up these stupid rules? The day she turned 18, she swore to him, she'd steal money from her college fund, buy a plane ticket, and be back in time to entangle herself with Alex and watch the sunset from Golden Gate Park. She secretly hoped Ed would fail again so she could go home sooner. Fuck it if I don't love my dad and want him to be happy, and so I'm here. Her surprise arrival was a sweet revenge. Ed budgeted four days for the car and three days in hotels. He assumed Junie preferred to sleep in a bed rather than a public car's uncomfortable cot. Junie was outdoorsy in only a fair weather way, despite a half dozen summers at a Girl Scout camp in the Sierra Nevada. Rock climbing, hiking, gossiping, enough to last the rest of the year. Well, maybe not gossiping. It was true she preferred a mattress and sheets to a sleeping bag, but roughing it in the car was worth the chance to get to utility a day early and see Ed go ape shit. Pausing on the sidewalk, she shaded her eyes to study dark streaks on the looming dam's, what's it called? Spillway. Where's the water? A car with flashing yellow roof lights accelerated out of the nearby authorized-only parking lot, teasing her curiosity. 
She watched the car for a few seconds as it raced toward the concrete monster like a police car chasing a robber. After half a kilometer or so, it halted among other vehicles with strobing lights. Junie stepped through the glass doors into an arena-like open space under the pie tin's roof. The space was empty and deconstructed as if a parasite had eaten out the interior, leaving a scattering of lonesome cubicles. The contrast between the desert air and the A.C. in the building raised goose pimples on her butterscotch skin. She stepped up to a decrepit security bot. Excuse me, I'm here to see the project superintendent. Junie girl, Edward Malcolm Wise baritone echoed in the cavern of the repurposed building. It seemed to add 10 centimeters to his 188, as well as his open-mouthed smile. Junie's heart melted and she rushed to her father, her tenny runners silent on the bare concrete floor. Father and daughter hugged, and she took in the smell of his broadcloth shirt tinged with coffee and maple from his breakfast cereal. For a moment, she forgot her resentment of his demand that she move to utility. For the moment, she let herself be his favorite only child. She stood on tiptoe to kiss his cheek. Surprise! You're supposed to be here tomorrow. Ed wasn't angry, just a little nonplussed. I've been in meetings all day, and I didn't think to check your progress. I didn't see any reason to wait, Dad. We're in an emerging situation, and I can't break away right now. Junie had no idea what emerging meant, but she took satisfaction from flustering her father. The triumphant feeling faded quickly. He was working, and by the look of the people around him, doing something important. Sorry, Dad. No, I'm glad you're here, he returned the kiss. Ed made quick introductions for Junie, a well-dressed, if dowdy woman who was mayor of utility, and a craggy-faced, calloused man who had to be at least 80 years old. Culchy is all. After a minute of negotiation, the group allowed Junie to come along on a site tour. Thanks for listening to the first 1,000 words of my novel, Restoration, the fourth book of my series, Tales from a Warming Planet. You'll find links to the book in the video caption, as well as links to the other novels in this series. All the full-length novels are available today in print and electronic form on Amazon. Look for the other videos in this series as well. I hope to see you again very soon.